Okay, week 10, common writing mistakes. But first, some comments from me. Okay, so this is quite important. Make sure you watch the videos for your class only. I am teaching three separate classes, as you can see here, Academic and Professional English 1, which is called APE1. And then there's also Academic and Professional English 2, shortened to English 2. And there is another class, Basic English. Now each of these classes, they use, they're using different books. So APE1 is using Unlock, AP2 is using Breakthrough Plus 3. The curriculum, the tests, the assignments are not the same. So you only watch the videos that I share with you on Smart Campus. Some students are doing the wrong assignments and even some of you did the wrong test. So it's really important that you make sure you check the correct video for your class. And basically, you just have to watch the video that I share with you on Smart Campus. Okay, please don't watch every video on the YouTube channel because some of them are not related to your class. So that's the first thing that I just wanted to check that everybody's understanding. Right, let's move on. We're going to do the common writing mistakes. And this can be an interactive video. So what you can do is you can pause the video every now and then and just see if you can find the mistakes. Okay, here we go. Right, common writing mistakes, number one. So this sentence or these two sentences, there are some mistakes. Let me just read it. I went to playground a lot when I was a child. I also went to the China once when I was seven years old. Right, so each example has a different type of grammar mistake. And this one is about articles in English, articles, the, a, and an. And there are three mistakes. So can you find them? So what I would suggest is pause the video, see if you can find the mistakes, and then start the video again. Okay, so here is the correct sentence. I went to the playground a lot when I was a child. So this is a very, very common mistake, but you have to try to use articles when you are using nouns. Of course, it's not always easy to decide if you're going to use the or a uh, or an. But let's have a look at this example. I went to the playground a lot when I was a child. Okay, so the playground, because it's the playground that I know as a child from my memory. So it is only one. So that is why I call it the playground. It is the one playground from my memory. I went to the playground a lot when I was a child. Look at the second sentence. I also went to the China. Nope, you don't need to use the with countries. So you can erase the, and it should just read, I also went to China once when I was seven years old. Okay, so just have a look at this note at the bottom here. Countries, cities, towns, etc. Do not use the unless it is already in the name. So for example, the Philippines, that country has the in the name, so it's okay. But pretty much most countries, you do not need to use the. Okay, let's move on. Number two. I remember the first time I flew on an airplane. I feel excited and nervous, but when the plane took off and landed, I was fascinated. Okay, there are three mistakes. 
And this one is about verb tense agreement. So you're looking at the verbs and you're looking at the tense. Past tense, present tense, future tense. And then it also says there, there is a spelling mistake. Okay, let's have a look at the correct sentence. So you can see there in the red, I remember the first time I flew on an airplane. Right, so generally speaking, you shouldn't be making too many spelling mistakes when you're sending me your work by Word files because that has a spell check in there. So you can just check your spelling with the spell check function in the program. So generally speaking, any spelling mistakes, they're pretty much just laziness because you do have the ability to check all of the spelling with the programs that you are using. Uh, but the most important point here is about the verb tense agreement. So let's have a look at the next sentence. So it's not I feel excited, it's I felt excited. Now why is it past tense? Because look at the first sentence, I remember. So if it is I remember, then obviously it is a memory. And then obviously it's in the past tense. So I felt excited and nervous. But when the plane took off and landed, I was fascinated. So it's not take off, you've got to change it to the past tense, took off. Okay, so this is quite a common mistake. Often students, they change the tense in the middle of one sentence. Starts with the present tense, changes to the past tense. So please just be careful, make sure that you stay in the same tense. Okay? Okay, number three. I had many friends when I was in middle and high school. We used to go many PC room and singing room. Right, this one has four mistakes. So pause the video, see if you can find them. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. The mistakes are related to single or plural, and then also the correct prepositions. Okay, so here is the correct, the corrected sentences. I had many friends when I was in middle and high school. Right, so if you use the word many, then obviously it is more than one. And therefore, you have to use the plural form. I had many friends. Next sentence, we used to go to. So we need the preposition there, go to. We used to go to many PC rooms and singing rooms. So again, there is the word many. So you can't have the single PC room. You need to make it plural, PC rooms. Okay, so just be careful when you're writing your sentences and check, are you talking about a single noun or are you, you using the plural form? Plural means more than one. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, there are some people in the singing room. Okay, number four, I asked my partner about her major. She's major is computer science and me is electrical engineering. So this one has two mistakes and this is related to pronouns. Now there are many, many different types of pronouns. In this particular example, it's about possessive pronouns. Okay, so just Stop the video, have a look, see if you can find the mistakes. Okay, here is the corrected, the corrected sentences. I asked my partner about her major. Her major is computer science and mine is electrical engineering. 
So basically, you've got to change she's to her and me to mine because you're talking about something that is possessive. It's hers, it's mine, it's his. Her major is computer science and mine is electrical engineering. Okay, now here is another mistake that I saw in some of the homework assignments. We have to ask yourself. Now you've got to make sure that your pronouns match. We and yourself do not match. We matches with ourselves. You matches with yourself. So we have to ask ourselves. That would be the correct sentence. Okay, so this is all about making sure that your pronouns are matched up and also agreeing with each other. Number five, on the weekend, I usually rest at home. Sometimes I go shopping, eat delicious food, meet my friends, or just drink coffee in the cafe. Okay, so there are three mistakes. Capitalization, right, this is a biggie. So just have a quick look there. Can you see where the mistakes are? On the weekend, I usually rest at home. Next sentence, every sentence starts with a capital letter. Sometimes I go shopping, eat. Right, now look, in the incorrect example, eat has a capital E, but there is no need for a capital E when you are writing a word after a comma. After a comma, it's still the same sentence. There is no need for a capital letter. Now, quite a few students were making mistakes with this. So make sure that you know the rules. After a comma, it is a small letter unless it is a proper noun. So sometimes I go shopping, eat delicious food, meet my friends, or just drink coffee in a cafe. None of those words need to have capital letters. Okay, so here's also the rule. Remember, always a capital starts a new sentence with a capital letter. Oh, there's a mistake there. Always start a new sentence with a capital letter. After a comma, the next letter should always be a regular small letter unless the word is a proper noun. Okay, so just be careful because a lot of students after commas, they're putting capital letters and that is not correct. Number six. I'm very fascinating when I watch sci-fi movies, although sometimes they are a little bored. I'm also interested in fantasy films. Okay, sci-fi is SF, by the way, science fiction. In English, you can say science fiction, you can say sci-fi, you can say SF. But that is not the problem here. There are three mistakes. And this one is about adjectives ending in ED or ING. Okay, so let's have a look at the correct answer. Not I'm very fascinating, I'm very fascinated when I watch sci-fi movies, although sometimes they are a little boring. I'm also interested in fantasy films. Right, so basically all of the adjectives had the incorrect ending. Now, what is the rule? If you are describing the way that you feel, then you need to end the adjective with ED. Okay, so I'm bored, I'm interested, I'm fascinated. I'm interested in reading books. I'm fascinated by Korean politics. And then the next rule, if you are describing the thing or the object that makes you feel that way, 
that's when you use ing. Okay, so look in the example. Science fiction movies are a little boring. So that's describing the thing, in this case, science fiction movies. Okay, so this is a simple rule, but also quite a common mistake. So just be careful with your adjectives and make sure you've got the correct ending. Are you describing your feeling or are you describing the thing that makes you feel that way? Okay, number seven. Almost my friends were there at my birthday party. Right now, this is also very, very common. There's only one mistake. And it's, it's, it's basically a translation problem. You might, some people might say it's a Conglish thing, but the problem is the word almost. So the correct sentence would be almost all of my friends. Because in English, almost means almost everything or almost everyone, the, the majority, but not quite all. So almost all of my friends. You can't just use the word almost. In English, it doesn't work like that. We would only use the word almost, usually if we're talking about time. It's almost three o'clock. It's almost time to go home. I'm almost finished. That's how we usually use that adverb uh, in English, and it's usually related to time. But if you want to use almost in the way that a lot of Korean students want to use it, which is basically saying most of my friends or most people, then you have to say almost all. Okay, so in this example, almost all of my friends were there at my birthday party. Here's another one that I saw a lot on the uh, homework assignments. Almost Koreans like spicy food when they are feeling stressed. So it's the same problem. Almost all Koreans like spicy food when they are feeling stressed. But there's also another problem here. This one is too much of a generalization. You remember we did some work with avoiding making generalized statements. So the best way actually would be to use the word many. Many Koreans like spicy food when they're feeling stressed. Okay, so be careful with your use of the word almost. Okay, number eight. Koreans tends to like kimchi. My brother tend to like action films. Coffee tend to taste bitter. Right, so for the uh, academic and professional one and the basic English students, we did study this a little bit. There are some mistakes here. So if the noun is single, if it's only one, then you should use tends to. Not tend to, you have to add the S. So, my brother tends to like action films. Okay, that is a single noun. My brother tends to like. If the noun is plural, more than one, then you're going to use tend to. So in this example, Koreans tend to like kimchi. Okay, tend to is like usually, mostly. If the noun is uncountable, then you're going to use tends to, which is the single form. So the example here, coffee, uncountable noun, coffee tends to taste bitter. Okay, so just be careful with the way that you are using tend to or tends to. Number nine, the latest coronavirus figures show that the number of new cases is slowing down in Korea. 
And this also means people feel more confident to go outside because they want to enjoy the sunny weather. But personally, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Okay, so there are three mistakes. This is super common mistake. Uh, and on many people's assignments, I have already given you some comments about this one. Basically, you should not be starting new sentences with the words and, but, and because. Okay, it is not considered academic English. All right, so let's go through each one individually. You can replace and with a different word. And here are some examples. You could use also, you could use furthermore, you could use in addition. And actually there are some other choices as well, but those are probably the three most common ones. Okay, so replace the word and with one of those words. Here's an example. The latest coronavirus figures show the number of new cases is slowing down in Korea. New sentence. Also, this means people feel more confident to go outside. Okay, so that's all you're doing there is you're replacing the word and. But there is also another choice. You could just make it one sentence. Okay, so you just use the word and to connect two clauses, two parts in the one sentence. And here is the example. The latest coronavirus figures show the number of new cases is slowing down in Korea. And this means people feel more confident to go outside. Yeah, that's fine. So you just use the word and in one sentence. Okay, so just be careful there. You don't want to use and to start a new sentence. Let's have a look at the other two words. Okay, so you can replace but with however. So the example would be however, comma, personally, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Again, or you can just make it one sentence. They want to enjoy the sunny weather, but personally, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. <laughs> okay, so both of those options are fine, but you have to choose one of those. You have to start a new sentence with however, or you have to use but in one sentence. And it's the same rule with all, with all of these words. You can replace because with the reason for this is. Also, this means people feel more confident to go outside. The reason for this is that they want to enjoy the sunny weather. Okay, so that's fine, that's two sentences. Or, just like the other ones, make it one sentence. Also, this means people feel more confident to go outside because they want to enjoy the sunny weather. And actually, I would recommend you use that option. Okay, if you want to use the word because, put it in one sentence. Okay, and then number 10, format. So some people are having a few problems with the correct format of your computer essays or emails. So here are some basic rules. First of all, make sure you write until the end of the line. This is called block style. And then for every new sentence, you should leave two spaces. And that means hit the space bar two times. Okay, at the start of a new sentence. So basically, after a full stop or a period. Uh, if you're using a comma in one sentence, then it's just one space. One space after a comma. And also, if you're going to use what we call parentheses, sometimes also called brackets, 
Also, you need to leave one space between the word and then whatever you have in the brackets. Finally, no space needed if using a question mark, as you can see in this example. Okay, so format is important because there will be points in the writing uh, paper, the final writing paper, there will be points for the correct format. So I've just given you another example here. This would be wrong because basically it's not block style. The student is not writing until the end of the line. They're, they're making each new sentence on a new line. Let's have a look at the correct way. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, so you have what we call indent for the first sentence. And then you can see after every period or full stop, there are two spaces. And then for the comma, look at the last sentence. So, comma, one space. I intend to follow this same way next time I take a test. Okay, so please refer to this page in this video lesson to make sure that you have the correct format. Right, okay, so that is the end of this video lesson. There were 10 examples of common mistakes. So please watch the video closely and yeah, try to avoid those mistakes. Now, I'm also going to share a worksheet in week 10 class content, but you do not need to e email this to me, okay? Do it yourself, and at the start of the next video lesson, I will go through the answers. Okay, so you can just download the worksheet, have a go at doing it yourself, and then when I upload the next video lesson, I'll go through the answers, and you can check it by yourself at that time. Okay, so that is the end of this video lesson, everybody. See you next time.